Good morning, Speaker Christopoli, President Gardner, and members of the Florida Legislature. Welcome, Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Quintero. I'd also like to welcome Attorney General Pam Bondi. <clears throat> Chief Financial Officer Jeff Atwater. <clears throat> Commissioner of Agriculture Adam Putnam. Chief Justice LaBarga, and members of the Florida Supreme Court. I would also like to recognize my amazing wife, Anne. She's the love of my life. She's my best friend. We have been blessed. We have two wonderful daughters, and we have four very energetic grandsons. And this year, we'll celebrate our 44th wedding anniversary. Today marks my 262nd week in office as the governor of the great state of Florida. And I've had a lot of time to reflect over the past five years. Judging by earthly standards, Anne and I have had a good bit of success in our lives. But as I reflect on that, I realize that our time on earth is fleeting. And I'm unable to do anything of lasting significance without the grace of God. I know that our work that is eternal is the time we spend investing in other people our families for sure, but we also do work of lasting significance when we invest in the lives of our friends and our neighbors. I ran for governor to help my neighbors, all 20 million of them across our great state. There are some who believe that the best way to help people is for government to give them money. And the truth is, for those in dire need, we need to provide a safety net. With your help, we have invested Florida taxpayer dollars to make a lasting difference in the lives of Florida families. For the first time ever, we completely, we, we, we completely, completely funded the critical needs waiting list for those, for persons with unique abilities so they can help, get the help they need. We've made a record high investment in our education system so every child can have the opportunity to pursue their American dream. And just this year, we started a pilot program to better serve individuals who suffer with substance abuse and mental illness. These are two issues that affected my family and affect families all across our state. But government assistance must be the very last resort, not the first. Government does not create, pro create prosperity, and it never has. Top-down mandates from big government are artificial and not sustainable. Real prosperity is created by the ingenuity and the hard work of the American people. The people of Florida have proven that when they are unfettered by the artificial constraints of government, they are the ones who create real and genuine prosperity for their families. Prosperity that is created naturally, not from the top down, but from the bottom up. Floridians want the opportunity to live their dreams. Therefore, I believe that the best way to help the weakest, 
the poorest, the most disadvantaged to live their is to get them a job. A job is the number one way to change any person's life for the better. And today, I'm proud to report that the great state of Florida is, in one word, growing. Thanks to the hardworking people of our great state, over one million jobs have been created in just five years since I took office. One million jobs. Now that's something every Floridian can brag about. One million jobs. One of those amazing job creators from our state, who is growing jobs from our state from the bottom up, is with us today. Please help me welcome the founder and CEO of Gladiator Lacrosse, Rachel Zeitz from Boca Raton. Rachel is just 15 years old, and she started her company when she was 13. Like any, comp yeah, that's impressive. Like any competitive athlete, Rachel said she wanted to practice lacrosse as much as possible. But she found the quality of her gear just wasn't holding up. Every few months, she was purchasing more equipment, and she said it was getting expensive. So Rachel decided to do something about it, and she, she created her own line of lacrosse gear to meet her standards. Between school, homework, and lacrosse practice, Rachel now runs an online company which had over $1 million in revenues in just two years. Now, even more impressive, this young small business owner now has three employees who help her out while she's in class. <laughs> so, Rachel, thanks for making Florida first for jobs. I know you're just starting your success. Congratulations. <clears throat> while I'm pleased to report to you today that the grace of Florida is growing, I must confess that our work has just begun. Now we face the mighty task of keeping job creation going strong. Now, we must set our sights higher to make sure we don't fall back. Now, we must be dedicated to making Florida not second to Texas, but first in the nation for job growth for years to come. Our goals are mighty, our challenge is clear. We have two objectives. First, we must keep doing what's worked the last five years to help Floridians get a job and live their dreams and keep cutting taxes. Second, we must diversify our economy and help small businesses grow 
by creating a new $250 million Florida Enterprise Fund. which has already been endorsed by mayors and city leaders all across our state. With record state revenues, we have the opportunity to diversify our economy and help our small businesses grow by cutting taxes by $1 billion. I've never heard of a business person that wanted to grow a smaller business. If we put more money in their pockets, they're going to spend it on research, new equipment, and hiring to create more jobs. And <laughs> and I started our first business in Kansas City. I was 22 years old, and I had just gotten off of active duty with the U.S. Navy. We took our entire life savings at $3,500, and we opened up a donut shop so my mom could have a job. It's hard work to start a business. It's risky. It's scary. I can still remember it like it was like yesterday. That's why I'm asking for your support this legislative session for our first for jobs $1 billion tax cut package to cut the cost for manufacturers, innovators, and entrepreneurs in our state who take the risk to make our economy grow and create good paying jobs. A tax cut package of $1 billion may seem like a high number. But let me put a face to this effort by introducing you to Dane Gray. Dane, please stand. <laughs> Dane is the CEO of Elite Parking Services in Jacksonville. In college, Dane began a valley parking service to make extra money. Little did he know that his dorm room business would turn into a company with 360 employees and locations all across the country before he turned 30 years old. Dane City now plans to add around 100 new Florida, employee, Florida employees over the next year. Our First for Jobs tax cut package will cut the commercial lease tax Dane pays today and help him keep more money to reinvest in the company he worked so hard to create. Dane, thank you for working hard to make Florida first for jobs in the nation. I also want to introduce you to Isaac Lidsky, CEO of ODC Construction in Orlando. <laughs> Isaac is blind, but his degenerative eye disease never stopped him from accomplishing his dreams. He graduated from Harvard Law School and was the first blind U.S. Supreme Court law clerk. It gets better. His entrepreneurial spirit brought him to the great state of Florida in 2011 when he took a chance and used his family's life savings to buy ODC construction. ODC built more than 2,000 homes in Florida last year and employs more than 300 men and women. And I'm excited to announce that they built a brand new headquarters in Orlando and we'll be cutting the ribbon on it very soon. Pretty impressive.
For the past four years, ODC has had commercial leases on their buildings in Orlando and Tampa, which has cost them over $14,000 a year in taxes. And Isaac's here today in support of reducing the commercial lease tax on businesses to make it easier for entrepreneurs like him in Florida to start and grow business and create more jobs. Thank you, Isaac. We know that the commercial lease tax unfairly targets both small and large businesses all across our state. And under the First for Jobs tax cut package, we will begin the fight to do away with this unfair tax. Now, cutting taxes alone will not be enough to diversify our economy and allow Florida to become first for jobs. That's why we're asking for your support to reform our business incentive process at Enterprise Florida to create the new Florida Enterprise Fund. The creation of this new $250 million dedicated trust fund will help us diversify Florida's economy, support our small businesses, and become the number one place in the world for families to get a good paying job. Please help me welcome just a few of the mayors who have supported our proposal to create the new $250 million Florida Enterprise Fund who are with us today. First, Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry. Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn. Fort Myers Mayor Randy Henderson. Appalachicola Mayor Van Johnson. A little bit further back. And Pensacola Mayor Ashton Hayward. Thank each of you for your support and all the jobs you've created. Enterprise Florida has helped many businesses move and expand in Florida to create good paying Florida jobs. But today I want to share just one story with you. Last year, I met with First Choice Aerospace on a trade mission to Kentucky. While I was there, we announced that First Choice Aerospace had chosen to expand in Miramar instead of their home state of Kentucky, which resulted in 45 new Florida jobs. First Choice Aerospace picked Florida over Kentucky because of our talented workforce, our low taxes, and our strong presence in the aviation industry. Because we temporarily ended the sales tax on manufacturing machinery and equipment, First Choice Aerospace has been able to save money and reinvest it into their business. And that's why we must permanently end the sales tax on machinery, on manufacturing machinery and equipment this year. If not, it will effectively be a tax increase on small businesses like First Choice Aerospace. We want First Choice Aerospace to keep growing and hiring more employees, employees like David Tablada, who's here with us today. David was the first employee First Choice Aerospace hired when they expanded in Miramar. David moved to Florida when he was eight years old from Nicaragua, so his father could pursue a career in aviation. David worked hard to follow in his father's footsteps and attended the George T. Baker 
Aviation Technical College in Miami to get the skills he needed to get a good paying job. David said he's thankful to work at First Choice Aerospace because he can provide for his wife, Anya, and his son, Sebastian. David said his job at First Choice Aerospace is allowing him to live his American dream in Florida and also enables him to give back to his community. As a former law enforcement officer, David is working hard to become a volunteer reserve police officer in Miami Beach. David, thanks for being here and thanks for helping Florida for jobs. Many of you know that my favorite three topics are jobs, jobs, and more jobs. But I want to switch gears today before I conclude. In thinking about the internal significance of our 20 million neighbors all across our state, I have been increasingly focused on their safety over the past few months. The hate-filled, Cold-blooded events of recent months make it clear that we live in a fallen world where terror sometimes reigns and evil seems unbridled. We've seen people at a concert ruthlessly murdered in Paris. Healthcare workers massacred in San Bernardino. And a Floridian, Stephen Sotloff, beheaded at the hands of ISIS, ISIS just a few months before. No one can dispute that ISIS is evil. Our next president must make it their mission to immediately eliminate the threat of ISIS to the United States of America. As a proud U.S. Navy veteran, I found it even more important over the last few months to stop and honor those who serve to keep our nation safe from harm, at home and abroad. One of those service members is here with us today. Please help me welcome Captain Brian McDowell. an active Guard Reserve member of the Florida National Guard, who is currently serving in the 3rd Battalion of the 20th Special Forces Group out of Camp Blanding. He began his military career in 2000 and has been deployed multiple times in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. While deployed to Afghanistan in 2004, Brian received the Purple Heart. After sustaining significant shrapnel and burn injuries to his entire body from an IED explosion. After spending six months in the hospital overcoming life-threatening injuries, he fought hard to be able to return to work with his fellow guardsmen. I'd like to welcome, welcome Captain McDowell and his wife, Anna, who's also an active Guard Reserve member of the Florida National Guard here today. As we honor Captain McDowell and his wife, Anna, will every active service member, every veteran, and every first responder in the chamber today please stand so we can thank you for your service.
In closing, let me say again what I will say all across the state on my bus tour that starts tomorrow. The state of Florida is, in one word, growing. <laughs> Together, we have turned, completely turned our economy around, and more families are thriving here today than five years ago. Florida recently surpassed 20 million residents, and we're adding more than 1,000 new residents per day, growing faster than California and New York. Florida has added more than one million jobs. But we cannot let up. Our $1 billion tax cut package and the creation of the Florida Enterprise Fund will be key elements to make Florida first for jobs in the nation for years to come. Let's work together to diversify our economy, help our weakest, our poorest and our most disadvantaged live their dreams and get a job, even when times are tough across the nation. Let's work together to cut taxes, help families working hard to live their dream in Florida. Let's work together to help every small business owner who's risking their life savings to succeed here in Florida. Let's work together to support the next young entrepreneur like Rachel, Dane, and Isaac building the next great idea right here in Florida. Let's work together to make sure Florida continues to have a world-class education system. Let's keep working together to make a lasting life, lasting legacy on lives all across our state. Let's make Florida first for jobs together. God bless every one of you and God bless the great state of Florida. Thank you.